Motorcycles is not just a mode of transportation to me, but it also represents freedom and adventure. However, right now we are at a very interesting point of time whereby we are beginning to move to electric vehicles. Are you ready for electric motorcycles? Hi, my name is Chapri. Welcome to SayuChichap.com and this is the Blue Shark R1. But first, let's take a look at the design of the Blue Shark R1 electric scooter. As you can see right here, it's very sleek, it's very modern looking. In fact, when I parked this bike right here in KLCC, nearby the Saloma Link Bridge, quite a number of people actually come to me and ask, what is this? I've never seen it before. In fact, some of them were actually foreign tourists come and take a photo with it. This is definitely an eye-catching design and Blue Shark has definitely hit a blue sign mark on that. The same goes to the bike's build quality. It's pretty great and I didn't spot any rough edges or major flaws. Although, if you smudge the floorboard real bad, it might be hard to get it clean again. So if you are getting this bike, try to clean the floorboard often. How about performance? Well, Blue Shark claimed that the R1 can go from 0 to 50 in just 4.9 seconds. But why 0 to 50? Why not 0 to 100? Well, that's because this bike can only go up to 80 km per hour. That's why. <laughs> no, you can't wheelie this bike. Don't let the big talk number fool you. While electric vehicles are known for their instant acceleration, is sort of hit and miss for the R1 when in normal drive modes which are Eco, Comfort and Sport the acceleration is not as exciting as I anticipated to get a more punchy acceleration I have to switch to the turbo mode which is the closest feeling that I can get to a traditional internal combustion motorcycle regardless of the riding mode the R1's acceleration rate generally feels rather linear after hitting the 30 to 40 km an hour mark. Sure, the turbo mode brings me to the top speed much faster, but still, this bike, unfortunately, is generally not quick enough to overtake other vehicles at high speed. To put it in a more layman manner, pickup not enough lah ya. Despite its underwhelming performance, on the inside, this makes the Blue Shark R1 rather beginners friendly. Not only that, the bike is also quite light at only 114 kg inclusive of its two batteries. Its lightweight nature allows the R1 to be quite nimble and this made the bike great for city traffic, especially as you try to maneuver your ways around other vehicles. Essentially, this is where the bike really shines as far as riding experience goes. I do have a little feedback about the suspension tuning though, which is rather stiff. While this allows the bike to provide good feedback to my hands, but it also kind of makes them a little bit sore at the end of the day. So ultimately, the R1 has enough performance to be quite zippy in town, but it is not meant for open roads or highways, or even the Federal Highway motorcycle lane during morning peak hours. You can turn on the turbo mode to make it accelerate better, but that would deplete the batteries faster as well. Speaking about the batteries... So, one of the best features of the Blue Shark R1 is the fact that it has removable batteries. While you can still charge the batteries directly through the bike, the fact that it has removable batteries means that you can take those batteries out and charge it separately. But that's not all. I would say the really, really good part of having that design is the fact that you can take those batteries Instead of waiting to charge it for a few hours, just take them directly to one of the Blue Swap station. We are currently at the Petronas Section 13 in Shah Alam, which is one of the four locations currently available for the R1. And right now, the current setup of the Blue Swap station made the switching the battery so fast, it takes just mere seconds. Let me just demonstrate it to you. First, of course, you need to, you know, lift out the seat. Just press the button, there you go, the batteries are there, take one of them. This is actually quite heavy, this is 11 kg each, you see, put it in, 
there you go. It detects the battery and just give me the new battery. Not even 10 seconds. Swap it in. Take another one. In case you need to change that one. Again, insert to another slot. Checking. Oh, slightly longer. Then there you go. I have a new battery. Slightly longer, but still. What? Under 30 seconds? Close this seat. I'm ready to go. Oh, before I forgot, it takes around 3 hours to charge the battery. Or around 6 to 7 hours if you want to charge them at the same time. Blue Shark does provide charger to R1 owners, which you can plug to your home's 3 pin power socket without any special modification. How about the range though? Well, that depends on how fast you ride the bike. Blue Shark claimed that the R1 can go up to 110 km, but that's only when you ride it at just 40 km an hour. In real life, as I ride it at a much higher speed, between 60 to 80 km an hour, I get an average range of slightly over 70 km. Given that my daily commute to work is around 25 km, that generally means I have to swap or charge the batteries on a daily basis. And man, those batteries are heavy. Imagine doing it every day. I'll have big biceps in no time. <laughs> so you may wonder which one is more cost effective. Swapping or charging? Let's use my home's current electricity tariff to calculate the cost. It currently stands at 51.6 cents per kilowatt hour. The R1 LFE batteries have a total capacity of 2.88 kilowatt hour. Hence, it costs me one ringgit 49 cents per charging session. Since my usage pattern dictates that I have to charge both batteries every day, the total monthly cost to charge R1 batteries for me is around 45 ringgit. Well, that is much lower than any of the battery swapping plans that Blue Shark currently offers to the public, which costs from 59 ringgit to 139 ringgit per month. So there you go. Charging is way cheaper than swapping. But of course, as demonstrated earlier, you can't beat the convenience of getting fresh batteries within minutes via the battery swap station. Another factor that made the Blue Shark R1 so different from motorcycles out there is the fact that it has been designed to become a smart motorcycle. Hence, there are so many sensors that have been seated into the bike, including the ultra sensors on both the end and the front part of the bike. There's also a full HD camera up front with a built-in DVR capability. There's also another one at the back that acts as a blind spot and reverse camera. The Blue Shark R1 also comes with 4G and Bluetooth connectivity as well as GPS. Then, there is also this Blue Shark mobile app. There are plenty of things that owners can do with the app, such as start the bike, open the seat, activate the honk, track the bike's location in real time, record riding statistics, and monitor the battery status. However, the Malaysian app is not yet ready at the time we reviewed the bike. So, there are still features that we didn't get to experience such as built-in navigation and even the app's guard feature which notifies owners if someone tried to move the bike while it is being parked didn't accurately show the bike location during my time with it. I can tell you, I clearly didn't park the bike in the South Atlantic Auction at that time. Speaking about the DVR feature inside the R1, the quality is actually quite fantastic, even in low light condition. However, to extract the footage out of the bike, it is a rather painful process because the user interface is quite rudimentary. It is alright if you want to download the footage immediately after you encounter an accident, but good luck if the footage that you want was captured a while ago. While the R1 might be full of sensors, the only time that I'm really aware that they are working is when I use the Move Assist mode to reverse park the bike. Through the mode, I am able to see the view from the bike's rear camera, while on screen, there are also indicators that tells me whether I'm too close to nearby objects or vehicles. It is a nifty mode that is useful when you're trying to park the bike in a tight spot or hilly area. And yes, the R1 also has cruise control feature, although it's just a passive cruise control instead of adaptive. Meanwhile, the 10-inch HD IPS screen that Blue Shark has fitted into the R1, while it looks pretty good and punchy, it is actually quite hard to see in daytime, even during overcast condition. In the name of safety, the Blue Shark R1 also comes with an artificial engine sound. The virtual room feature amuses me at first, but after a while, 
I started to get a little bit annoyed of its high pitch nature, especially when I'm riding at a high speed for extended time. I wish Blue Shark could allow R1 owners to download new sound packs to make things not only more bearable, but may also help inject additional excitement to the bike. All right, we have talked about its performance, battery charging and swapping experience, as well as its smart features. So now it is time to dive into the cost of ownership for the Blue Shark R1. With the starting price of 7,700 ringgit, the Blue Shark R1 is certainly competing in a very crowded space. When you look at the price range between 7,700 ringgit to 9,900 ringgit, there are so many options out there. Yamaha 135 LCFI, SYM Tuscany 150, Modena Spalsa NS160, just to name a few. And these bikes are definitely more powerful than R1 to say the least. If you consider R1's pricing with batteries included, which is between 12,800 ringgit to 15,000 ringgit, it opens up the list even further. Yamaha MT15, Vespa S125, KTM Duke 200, which is a great bike because I used to own one, Modena's Domina D250. Heck, for just a little bit more, you can even go for the 400cc Modena's Domina D400. So if you're looking from the pricing performance factor against traditional ice bikes, the Blue Shark R1 doesn't stand a chance really. In the long run though, the R1 may triumph over the ice bikes when it comes to maintenance costs since you don't have to change its engine oil or oil filter and the bike also doesn't have spark plug, sprockets and clutch. When compared to other electric motorcycles, the gap is much closer. For example, the R1 series is generally cheaper than the Eclimo ES11 which has a starting price of 13,500 ringgit. Performance wise, at least on paper, the ES11 seems not too far off since it has a 6 kW motor and a maximum speed of 85 km an hour. It also has a range of up to 100 km when riding at 50 km an hour. The ES11 does not have a swappable battery but it does have a rapid charging feature which cuts down the charging time from 3 hours to just 1 hour. Although this is limited to variants with 7.2 kW an hour battery which costs around 18,000 ringgit. So, here comes the big question. Who's this bike is really made for? Well, for one, the Blue Shark R1 is made for anyone out there, corporations or individuals alike, who really want to be on board the green mobility agenda. Zero emission. Excellent. I reckon that the Blue Shark R1 is also great for city dwellers since it is nimble enough to go through city traffic. And the R1 seems like a great motorcycle to be used at holiday islands such as Hangkawi, providing enjoyable casual ride, complete with vibrant design to match the vibe. It goes without saying that the Blue Shark R1 is also meant for those who love technology with its 4G and Bluetooth connectivity, sensors, cameras and app support. I don't think there are any other bikes like the Blue Shark R1 in Malaysia at the moment. As per many smart products out there, early adopters usually have to bear the initial high cost. And for electric motorcycles, that's where we are at the moment. There you have it. This is the first ever electric motorcycle review here at SorayTingChow.com. Please let us know what you think in the comment section below. Of course, if you like this video, please leave us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. Ultimately, please press the bell icon so that you will get notified whenever we release a new video. Once again, this is Chapri. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one.